Welcome to another post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Today is Friday, October 13th, 2023. On Tuesday night, the Indiana Hoosiers faced off against the Great Lake Canadians and won the exhibition contest 22-1. to After the game, myself and Chris Feeney caught up with head coach Jeff Mercer. All right, so I guess we'll start with talking about the uh, pitching tonight. Um, looks like your guys were, were really able to mix up velocities. We saw a lot of changes in velocities, got a lot of swing and miss. Um, is that what you were kind of – was that kind of the game plan that Coach Glant had for these guys? Yeah, there was really two things. Obviously, we wanted to attack the zone, and then we wanted to work on the off-speed pitches that those guys were particularly working on. So maybe a heavy change-up mix or some of those guys were working on splitters a lot of cutters, and so we were trying to get a ton of off-speed mix in just to get them out of their hand um, and then attack with them and feel comfortable getting the ball in the middle of the zone with their off-speed pitch. And, you know, we, we did a really good job of that last year of really continuing the trend of being able to throw any pitch in any count. And, um, you know, as we kind of go into this next phase, as they're going to more pitch design stuff, you, before you go into that uh, more wholeheartedly, you want to be able to get into a game setting to be able to have confidence, hey, we're, we're learning a cutter. Let's let's get a bunch of cutters out of our hand tonight. Or we're trying to learn a splitter. Let's get a bunch of splitters out of our hand and slide, whatever that may be. So we tried to work a lot of those in. That was a game plan and did a good job with it. Threw a bunch of strikes and, and attacked with it. So I was I was really happy with that. We didn't walk a guy until the last two pitchers. So that was really good. Um, uh, Aiden Decker Petty uh, was ended up being one pitch away from an immac- immaculate inning. Yeah. Uh, and he obviously pitched more than anybody else tonight. What did you like from what he's been doing? I, 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 today was a, his best uh, attack with his fastball, his, his highest strike percent, his most aggressive mentality with his, with his fastball. And he did. He got extended out. He had to come in, in, a, in a, uh, you know, with guys on base and having to get out of it, which is, which is a great experience for him. But he, he had his highest velocities and his highest strike percent today which was really good to see from him. Um, he's got good stuff. He's just got to be able to get in the zone consistently and compete with it. And today you could you could see him do that. So he's a guy that can help us. He's just um, like that. He helps us like that, where he's aggressive and he's throwing hard and he's competitive and there's a little bit of moxie and some body language to it. So I thought he was really good in totality. Um, and, and he's like you said, he was really close there to having that, having a really good inning and up, I think, walked the guy, but got right back in there and got out of it. So. Um, he got extended because you know, the guy before him wasn't able to finish. Uh, but in, in overall, he did a good job. It was a nice step forward for him. Uh, Bodie and uh, Colopy both crushed the ball today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what, what did you like from what they were doing? Well, they had really good direction. And, you know, early on, their starter was good. He was you know, 88 to 91 and threw some good stuff. So that, that was good to see them, you know, aggressive to those guys. Um, but throughout the course of the game, it's, it's easy as the score kind of gets away to to get really full side dominant and pull off balls, but they didn't. They didn't expand the zone. It was really hard contact in the middle of the field uh, and, and just really quality at-bats and, and quality approaches. And to be able to continue to do that for four, five, six at-bats, they were, they were both excellent uh, and, and just really good to see because they, they worked their tails off and it was good to see them get to go have a run and go get six or seven at-bats in a row and put together a whole body of work. They both, they, they both were great. Uh, you mentioned a bit uh, in, in lead up to this game, talking about how these guys would do defensively. What is? How do you kind of grade them on, on what the, on what the defense looked like today? I think Hayden Carlson kind of was the was the um, the leader of the pack. He made several really really nice plays. Has a it's just a strong arm, um, and so that that was the big thing. You know, we I, I, maybe we made one error. I texted Jake Stadler this morning at about seven o'clock this morning. Said, hey, Have you ever played first base before? So he said, yeah, I actually played it in high school. I said, all right, Greg, you're starting at first base. So I think he made one. But besides that, he handled the rest of it. And uh, TJ hadn't, hadn't played first base before, so he was able to get over there. He caught up off the line, foul territory. So we chased some balls down in the outfield, made a bunch of nice plays in the infield. Uh, Jason Oliver made a couple of nice plays. Really um, you know, good breaks off the bat and, and drove back, caught, caught a couple of nice spot flies in the kind of the, the triangle in, in right field. So. And overall, we played really good defense, and, and, and like I said, Hayden Carlson was the leader of that group, uh, and so it was good to see. We just we have the athletes that we should be able to defend, and and so now you have to instill a sense of uh, urgency and a, a sense of um, how do you impact the game? Okay, you, you may have two hits, you may have two walks, but you can impact the game defensively every day, and it's got to show up. And it, and it showed up for us today, and it has over the course of the fall. We're getting better defensively. We just. We have to take great pride in the way that we play on that side of the ball, and, and uh, we just continue to grow there. So I was, I was really pleased. 
Uh, your offense showed a lot of patience today. Mm -hmm. um, so you took a lot of walks. A lot of your runs came off walks. Yeah. In fact, you had more runs than than hits today. Yeah. Um, so can you just can you just talk a little bit about yeah. what? Yeah. You know, we we've we've spent a lot of time on our three, five, and seven ball zones, and what counts to to cover what zone. And we spent a lot of time on the spin ball machine and just just hammering them the 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 ability to get to good counts and then to, to hit the ball hard when we get into a good count on the pitch that we're trying to cover. And we did that. And, and in the middle of the field is, is just such a big part of um, college baseball. And, and honestly, it's always a great – this time of the year is always great from a coaching standpoint uh, because of the playoffs. And so, you know, Major League Baseball can ebb and flow throughout the season, a bunch of strikeouts, and uh, we get big and all this stuff. But the playoffs, it's like college baseball on steroids, right? And – they're, they're hitting singles the other way. They're on a line. They're taking walks. It's base running and cuts and relays and all the things that, that really impact college baseball in general. But now that stuff is brought to the forefront. And so I'm sure they're tired of me sending text messages about six times a night. They watch this or see this. And so much of it is just how is offense played at a high level. And I'm so glad that we're able to play these scrimmages now because playing Indiana State and playing Notre Dame um, as a coach, you, you don't have to, I don't want to holler and yell. I, I don't want to, you know, admonish and do those things. I want to just have the game be able to unfold and have the game be the teacher and then, you know, kind of pull the strings to help those guys to be better at playing the game at a high level. And that's what this is able to do. And so you're able to see guys to really zero in, uh, not expand the zone, hit the ball in the middle of the field, uh, trust, trust, um, I would say the trademark to the barrel and not the barrel to the cap. Uh, and, and not pulling off balls. And for those young guys that got a chance to go in there and play there, I thought we did a good job. T.J. Schuyler was terrific at it. I mean, he had a really good night, especially for a young guy who's had a swing, a lot of swing changes, and uh, it's just a lot to change your swing that much and then have a good approach and put it all together and have a bunch of success. So, um, you know, it, it, it all kind of culminates in, um, like, you have to be able to get to a good pitch and hit a ball hard consistently in the middle of the field. If you can do that, you have a chance to, to score a lot of runs. And if you don't, uh, you really don't. The, the, the game just revolves around that that thing. So if if we have to train at a really high level to get there, then that's great. Um, if, if you can watch the game, if you can watch us play, if you can watch professional baseball and see it, then that really helps too. And I think all those things together, we've just gotten a lot better really fast, really, really quickly in the last two or three weeks. And and I and I and I'll, and I'll you know I tell you guys the truth when we're not very good I'll tell them we're not very good and we've been good then I'll tell them that and, and I I've been pleased we've just really improved and done a good job with it. You brought up the postseason and uh, we have your first Hoosier that you coach yeah, is now yeah. playing in the postseason. Yes. Uh, how does that feel to have Andrew South Frank being on yeah. the uh, bright lights of October? And he's been awesome too. You know when I've seen him get in there it's been been terrific and Andrew still comes back all the time and. Um, I, I shot him a text. I, I got a text from his agent saying he was uh, getting called up. And so I text him and, and he said, hey, don't tell anybody yet. It's not public. And I said, I, I won't. I just was really proud of you and really happy for you. And, um, you know, he's persevered through injuries and made his way up. And, and has, he's been great. And he's got a chance to, to, to play for a long time, you know, with the breaking ball. And, and when you're able to come in in the playoffs and run his own base and do some of the things he's done, I mean, that takes a ton of moxie and a ton of toughness. And it's rewarded at all levels. Um, but it is pretty incredible to think, you know, just a couple of years ago, he was, you know, leading us to a, a Big Ten championship. He's a Big Ten pitcher of the year. Um, you know, coming in if, at that time, Tommy Summer got hurt and Andrew got slated in or, or um, slid into the Sunday guy. They were probably three or four weeks into the season and he goes on to be the Big Ten pitcher of the year. And now he's in the big leagues. And um, I think, you know, stories of perseverance like that. And it, it really helps to, with our program to see with our guys, hey, it wasn't always smooth sailing. It wasn't always easy. He worked really hard. He had to overcome obstacles, and they had to overcome adversity in the minor leagues and, and get his way there. Um, and so it always helps for our guys to see that and real-life lessons in real time. Um, and then those guys that come back around in the program, and then you get to meet him and see him. It's just incredibly powerful and impactful. But most importantly, you're just really happy for, for Andrew and his family and you know, I saw the interview with his mom when he got called up to the big leagues and, and just, you know, just really emotional. It's really exciting. Just very, very happy for him. The Hoosiers now turn their attention to intra-squad play with a five-game Hoosier series starting today at 2 p.m. at Bart Kaufman Field. See you at the Bart.